The Cinders of Dezu, written and read by Oliver Tonic. A tyrant king, a missing girl, and a journey through a perilous world. Join me for this completed sci-fi fantasy novel read as an audio series. Enjoy the story from here on, or binge from the beginning with the first episode. Like and subscribe if you enjoy. My audiobooks are totally free. If you'd like to donate to support my writing, though, check out my Patreon in the description. And now, back to the tale. Chapter 1. Glistening Red Look, there are plenty of other games we could play, he said. The little girl looked up at him with pleading eyes. Please, Kai, I know what Dad said, but that crab was rude. They're usually more nice. Kind of. I'll be more careful this time, I promise. Cairo shook his head and looked out into the trees. We can't. Your dad said he doesn't want you getting hurt again. I'm supposed to be the responsible one. Rena looked down at the band-aid on her finger. It wasn't that bad. It doesn't matter how bad it was. Your dad said no. Rena grabbed his arms and jumped up and down. But it was so much fun! Cairo looked up to the sky and shook his head. Rena pleaded again. He won't find out. I won't tell him and I won't get hurt. I promise. Cairo sighed and looked down at his feet in the sand, rubbing pieces of bark littering with his toes. You're going to get me in trouble, Fluff. He closed his eyes for a moment to think. He finally relented. Fine, I'll go get the buckets. Raina's face lit up. Yes, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. She squeezed him tight with her head barely reaching up to his chest. You're the best. Kyra rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, just don't make me regret this. He left and quickly returned with the two buckets. He placed them on the ground. Okay, the yellow one is yours and the orange one is mine. You remember the rules, right? The grayish ones are one point and the reddish ones are two. First to fill their bucket stands by it and stops the game, and then we count up our points. In the event of a crawler, we lose a point, unless we catch it again. Yes, yes, okay, I know, she said. All right, Kyra said, taking a running stance. Raina smiled and her eyelids squinted in playful determination. He took three quick breaths. Ready, set, go. The two of them darted off in different directions, kicking up sand as they went. It wasn't shaded so close to the water, so the sand was much hotter, but as soon as they reached the sand under the canopy of palm trees, it cooled considerably. Cairo's bare feet dug into the cool sand as he went. He kept hitting little pieces of bark and sticks buried underneath. It was the only other downside of being barefoot on the beach, next to the intense temperature changes. It wasn't long before he saw one. Its little gray pincers were being held up as it scurried across the ground. Its green, protruding eyes hadn't rotated to notice him yet, which was fortunate. Cairo took his thumb and middle finger and scooped it up on its head and its bottom. Its arms and legs flailed as he dashed back to his orange bucket. When he got there, he spotted Reyna with her hands in her yellow pail, scooting it closer to the tree line. Ah, no, he said, snatching it from her with the other hand. You play by the rules. They have to stay in the same spot next to each other. You beg me to do this. The least you could do is not cheat. Raina gave him a fake growl and ran back into the trees. Cairo looked into the bucket as he moved it back and saw the little red legs scrambling against the inside. Man, I am not losing to her again, he mumbled through his teeth. He dropped his catch in the orange bucket and headed back in. This went on for about a half hour. Raina saw the little green eyes searching for food underneath a palm tree. They didn't run fast, but it was always better to sneak up on them than to chase them. He went around the back of the tree out of the field of vision of the roving eyes. She knelt down and scooped him up gently. His legs dangled and his claws raised like they were looking for something to grab onto. Raina ran towards her yellow pail and was just about to drop it in when a voice came from behind her. Raina, what have I told you? Startled, Raina almost dropped her catch in the sand. She turned around. It was her father, Devin. He leaned down, snatching the creature from her hand. Raina put her hands behind her back. She kicked her foot behind her and dug her toe into the sand. Not to play with the crabs. And why? 
he said. Because I could get pinched. But dad, that one was mean. They usually... No buts. I don't want to hear it, Raina. I don't want to see you messing with these things again. Cairo ran up with his crab in hand. He spotted Devin and quickly dropped it before it was seen. He stood next to his bucket while Raina kept trying to look unsuspecting. You hear me? said Devin, still looking at Raina. Yes, sir, she said. Devin looked over at the pails in the sand. And two buckets full? Goodness, child, you are going to lose a finger. He stood up and looked at Cairo. Were you watching her close? You didn't see her with these buckets? Cairo gave a cringe smile. That's a whole lot of crabs, he said. Mm-hmm, said Devin. Keep a better eye on her. She gets into this stuff. He sighed and looked at them both. It's time for food anyway. Come on up to the house. It's all ready to go. Devin headed off in the direction of the house. Cairo and Raina lagged behind but followed. They were watching him until he got out of earshot. You almost got me in trouble again, said Cairo in a hissing whisper. I told you we couldn't play the crab game. Hey, I was the one who got in trouble, said Raina. Way to let me take the fall. You didn't get in trouble. You call that getting in trouble? Plus you had to take the hit. You're his little girl. What's he going to do, disown you? I just turned 18. I'm supposed to be the adult now. Otherwise, I'm just a grown man teaching his daughter to play hazardous beach games. Nice grown-uping, blaming everything on a little kid, she said. Cairo rolled his eyes. Oh, so now you're a little kid. Look, this is your house. He's your dad. You're not going anywhere if he gets mad at you. I'm just on vacation by the good graces of my uncle. I can get voted off this island. The least you could do is get a slap on the wrist for your dear old cousin. His eyebrows raised. And don't think for a second I didn't see your whole Shirley Temple routine. He stopped walking and put his hands behind his back and dug his foot in the sand. His voice went high-pitched. Aw, gee, Dad. I don't know nothing about no crabs. Who's Shirley Temple? She asked. It doesn't matter. It's a code written in all you little girls. You know how to make hearts melt so you can get your way. Raina smiled as they kept walking. They were quiet, listening to their footsteps in the sand. Raina began to skip. Then she began to sing. Animal crackers in my soup. Monkeys in rabbits loop-de-loop. Cairo shook his head. What are you? Raina's teeth shone in her smile. Then she put her nose in the air and closed her eyes as she puffed out her chest. The daughter of a thespian. I think you're a demon, Cairo said. Raina slapped her hands on her cheeks and looked at him with a comically exaggerated show of offense. Cairo reflected it back to her with a gasp. They headed up the hill, tracing a path around the trees to a stone walkway, littered with bits of sand that led up to the door of a beautiful island house. It was mostly white-walled, with black pillars holding up the entrance as they approached it. As they entered, Devin was talking with his servants while they hustled and bustled about. They went inside and made their way to the dining room and kitchen where they prepared something that smelled delicious to Cairo. "'Can you grab Julian?' said Devin. "'He's in the—' "'Oh, I know where he is,' said Cairo. It was a perfect interception followed by a three-pointer when the door burst open and washed out the white jerseys and faces of the players. Ah, dude, too bright. It's the worst time for a glare, said Julian, pausing the game. He was sitting on a large couch, turning around to look into the light of the doorway. Cairo could see his eyes squinting like he was staring directly into the sun. Did you seriously turn off Knights of Ablasia for this? said Cairo. You know... Cool people like sports games. Cairo shook his head. I'm just saying, they could easily release a free patch every year and update the player stats. Maybe a couple dollars worth of DLC for new athletes? A new full game every year is a scam. They're scamming you. You know what? I don't like what you're saying. Also, I feel judged. You're judging me. Cairo scoffed. Devin has two rules. Be safe and we eat meals together. Otherwise, we can do whatever we want. Julian turned around and flopped his butt back on the couch. Lunchtime then, huh? I'm almost done with this quarter. How far did you get on nights before I left? Said Cairo, leaning over the edge of the couch, looking at the screen above them. The screen was massive, 
It went all the way up the wall they were facing and covered part of the ceiling. It reflected off of Cairo and Julian's eyes as they looked up at it, the commotion of the game commencing again. Let's see, you left like an hour and a half ago, and I started playing this immediately after, so can you please get rid of that glare? Cairo turned around and shut the door. You could have come with us, you know. Yeah, I could have, but you had to. Devin didn't ask me to take her outside and play. He asked the nephew, not the friend. Julian didn't take his eyes off the screen. Cairo rolled his eyes. We have a whole private island to ourselves, you know? You could take advantage of all it has to offer. Julian scoffed. Yeah, and you know what else this private island has to offer? An entire theater room to play video games. I think I'm taking advantage. Julian dunked as the buzzer went off. The instant replay started to play in slow motion. Nice, all right, let's go. He said as he dropped the controller and hopped over the back of the couch. They both left the room and began heading toward the dining room. So, who won the crab catch? What? I said we wouldn't play it. She can't play that anymore, said Cairo. You can't say no, dude. She gets you every time. Who won? Cairo's eyelids drooped and his lips turned up in a sarcastic smile. It was a tie, if you must know. They entered the dining room where the table was being set. Raina was already sitting in her spot. She had a knife and fork in her left and right hand, respectively, pounding the table like she was a cartoon. Devin walked in and sat next to her, placing a napkin on his lap. You boys ready to dig in? He said. Sure, what's on the menu? Cairo asked, taking his seat. Julian sat next to him. Devin sighed in satisfaction as the dishes were placed on the table before them. We have coconut shrimp with coconut rice, jerk chicken, festival, a leafy salad and grilled veggies, sautéed with jerk seasoning. I know no island is the same, but when I think of island food, I think of Jamaica, so here we are. He rubbed his hands together. The three looked at the spread, wide-eyed. Dig in, he said. The boys in particular could not contain their enthusiasm as they ate. Uncle Def, said Cairo. This is perfection. He smiled back at him with a mouthful. No, seriously, this is one of those perfectly satisfying experiences. I'm not exaggerating. All right, all right, said Devin. This isn't the food channel. Nah, but he's right, though, said Julian with his mouth full. I can't even handle this. Devin laughed. So, first official day on the island. No more high school ever again. <laughs> yeah said Julian, putting his hands in the air and rocking back and forth. Devin laughed. So think of this as a graduate's paradise. Virtually no rules, no parents. He turned to Raina briefly. Except for you, young lady. Raina folded her arms and smirked at him as she looked back at the boys. And I don't want you worrying about college, work prospects, none of it. Cairo smiled wide and nodded his head at his uncle as he continued. This is just two weeks of relaxing and zoning out with a touch of tropical adventure. I really want to thank you again, Devin, for letting me come out. I never thought I'd do anything like this, said Julian. Hey, you and Cairo are like brothers. Reyna's known you all her life. Honestly, I'm sorry it hasn't happened sooner. As far as I'm concerned, you're already family. Julian was beaming and looked at his best friend, who shrugged. It's just true. The dinner was over quickly, partly due to how good the food was and partly due to excitement for the next thing on the agenda. Cairo and Julian had been really anxious to go cliff jumping on the west side of the island. The water there was particularly pretty, so it was where you wanted to be in the evening as the sun went down. Large rock faces surrounded a cove where the water got deep quickly, not more than a few feet from the beach. Devin had Raina wear a life jacket, which she deeply resented. It was embarrassing being the only one swimming with one. Everyone had brought their chairs to set up in the sand, but Devin's was quite a bit larger as he began unfolding it. It was a lounge chair. Cairo scoffed. <laughs> you planning to do some sunbathing? Shut up, man. Devin laughed and smacked him on the shoulder. White folks ain't the only ones who can relax and lay out in the sun. <laughs> yeah, right. You've been uppity for too long. <laughs> well, I'm going to really trip you out with what I'm about to do next. 
Devin reached into his bag and pulled out a bottle. Sunscreen. Cairo shook his head. Wow, I'm about to confiscate your black card. Devin laughed out loud and popped open the cap. He gestured for Raina to come over. She looked and felt awkward as she kind of waddled over in her life jacket. Devin began applying the lotion to her arms. Ever since I got Raina, I've had to learn about these things. She needs it, and it turns out black folks need it too. You have been assimilated, Cairo said, narrowing his eyes. You're going to get cancer, said Raina. I'm not going to get cancer. I don't need it like you do. What are you, like Asianish? I'm cancer free. So am I. Not for long. Hey, you don't get to weigh in on this. Why? Is cancer a sensitive subject for you? Raina was all lathered up and walking with Cairo toward the water as they continued back and forth. Devin watched them as he rubbed the sunscreen on himself. Can I get some of that? Julian said from behind him. He had finished setting up his chair next to Devin's. Sure, said Devin. Julian took the bottle and squeezed some out. I don't know if it has instructions for Mexicans on here, but I'll join the crowd. He sat down and began covering himself as Devin laid out and got settled. They sat there quiet for a bit with nothing else but the sound of the waves and Cairo and Raina's argument that had settled to a conversation off in the distance. Devin had his eyes closed, feeling the sun on his skin. Julian then spoke up. So, I don't mean to fanboy out on you or anything... Devin cracked a smile with his eyes closed. Mm-hmm. I've just got to know. How is she? Who? Said Dev. Corinne Moran, man. How is she? Oh. He gave a bit of a chuckle. Yeah, she's cool. Real cool. Hard worker. Kind of a diva, but that happens a lot. Kind of comes with the territory. Really? Why? Devin laughed. I don't know if diva is the right word. Let me renege that. She just has standards for the people she works with, and she insists upon those standards. Let's put it that way. Huh. Yeah, no, that sounds diva-ish. Devin still had his eyes closed, but was smiling. No, I mean, it could turn into that, but honestly, she's cool to work with. She plays her part well. He sat up to look at him. I'm the high-strung chief of police, right? And she's this no-nonsense truth-seeker type. She came at me hard enough in some of the scenes it was hard to compete with her, if I'm honest. She just got that energy, you know? She keeps it up here, and I'm, like, reaching to contend with that. She's really good. Julian nodded. Very cool. Julian, you ready, man? Came Kyra's voice from the water. Yeah, I'm coming, he called back. The two headed up the side of the rocky hill that cradled the beach. Raina got out of the water to follow, but Devin called out to her. No, baby girl, you still aren't old enough yet. Dad, she groaned. I'm not a baby. You know I hate that. Why not? I'll be fine. Look, they just finished school and have their whole lives ahead of them, said Devin. If they want to kill themselves right before things get started, that's on them. But you are my responsibility. Raina growled and huffed as she turned around to get back in the water. Cairo and Julian reached the top of the cliff. The water below them was dark and clearly deep. Raina waded to the side of their plunging spot, bobbing up and down in the waves as she looked up at them. Cairo almost went first. He got to the edge and looked over and could see it was a safe path all the way down. He decided that it was the all-the-way-down part that bothered him. Raina looked quite small. And even though he had been here some time ago and done this before, he still hesitated and backed up. Julian decided it was best not to overthink it. He took a quick look over the edge to make sure he wouldn't hit anything and then just took the leap. He decided halfway down that the hang time was the worst part about the fall. He was in the air longer than he wanted to be and felt that if he had had a watch, he could have checked it mid-drop. The water was forgiving when he landed, though. He sank deep into the warm tropical waters. After a moment, his head came back up to the surface with his tongue out, taunting his friend still high up on the ledge. Come on, man. I haven't even done this before. What's wrong with you? 
Cairo shook his head, smiling. Julian looked over at Reyna, now next to him in the water. Your cousin is a stiff. Reyna nodded, but wasn't looking at him. Yeah, I know. I'm glad you're here to help me keep it fun around here. She was looking down. She was trying to keep her face out of the salt water, but he could see she was obviously trying to see something. He was about to ask when he heard a splash and felt water hit the back of his head. He turned around to see Cairo coming up from his jump. He was squeezing the water from his eyes. Do you guys see that down there? Said Reyna. They both looked at her. See what? Said Julian. Reyna frowned. It's some kind of glowy thing? It's red. They were all looking down now. I don't see anything said Cairo. I can grab the snorkel stuff, said Julian. He began swimming to shore. Cairo kept looking with Reyna, who was trying to point below the surface. See it? It's like a red rock, but it's shiny. Cairo didn't want to open his eyes under the salt water unless he had to. He still kept looking, though, until Julian was back shortly with the snorkeling gear for all three of them. Julian exclaimed through the snorkel when he spotted it. Reyna was right. It was glowing and red and partially covered by sand all the way down at the sea floor. Cairo resurfaced and took his snorkel off. I don't even know how you saw that. Julian lifted his head up and blew water out of his tube. I know, right? Crazy. He looked up at the cliff edge and squinted. Do you think if we dived again, we could reach it? I don't know. It's pretty far down, said Cairo. Let's get it done. Julian was already swimming toward the beach as he said it. Cairo had been right. It was a bit farther down than they had realized. The rest of the evening became a diving game for the stone. Once they hit the water, they had found that each time it took a bit more work than they realized to touch the bottom. It was frustratingly close. The pressure towards the bottom was intense. They would strain and run out of energy before they could reach their target. They needed a bit of a break each time they made a concerted effort and would wade for a bit and then try again. Cairo's ears started to pop when he got down too far. He was starting to get a headache. The day began to grow dark. Reyna watched with steadily growing frustration as they kept coming up empty-handed with each attempt. I could do this, she said. No fluff, said Cairo. I'm serious this time. You know what your dad said. Devin had left by this point. He had remarked that he had needed to handle some business, and in his absence, Reyna had become more vocal about helping. You wouldn't even be heavy enough if you tried, said Julian. Plus, you need the floaty. It's not a floaty, and I don't need it, said Reyna. The water had gotten quite a bit rockier, and they felt the sprinklings of rain at this point. Cairo wasn't going to let her take any chances. Give us just a few more tries, okay? We're running out of light, Julian said, looking out at the horizon. Come on, Cairo said, waving him over to the shore to climb up again. They made their way up the hill while Reyna kept staring down at the sea floor through her goggles. Julian was right. They were running out of light and the water had gotten a lot darker. And yet Reyna could still see the red glow so clearly. She floated there for a bit, being moved by the waves. Finally, the temptation grew to be too much. She began fiddling with the straps on her life vest until she found the plastic clips. She unfastened them and slipped her arms out. She held the vest out to the side of her and counted. She let go and took a deep breath. At that exact moment, a wave went over the top of her snorkel. Salt water began choking her, and she began to panic. She frantically began trying to find her jacket, but it was not where she left it. She tried to look around and began thrashing. She was coughing now and began aspirating more water. Her thrashing made her goggles loosen, and water started pouring in. The salt stung her eyes, and she couldn't see. She heard a splash nearby. This was followed shortly after by a strong arm wrapping around her. Her head came up to the surface in time to hear Cairo's voice speaking breathlessly. I got you. Julian watched from high up as Cairo carried his step-cousin through the water. Is she okay? He called down to them. Cairo took her to shore before he yelled back to him. I'm taking her back to the house. Julian frowned. He could see she was hat-coughing on her hands and knees in the sand. Poor thing, he whispered under his breath. I'll meet you inside, Cairo yelled to him. 
He led Reno away and walked up the path toward the house. Julian looked down at the increasingly turbulent waves below him. He knew it would mean a lot to her. He looked around him on the hill until he found a large stone. He went over to it and lifted it. It was smooth and fairly wide. He decided it seemed just light enough to carry, but just heavy enough to work. He went to the cliff's edge, carrying it in front of him. One last try, he said to himself. The fall was as long as it was before. It gave him time to think before he got to the water about how dumb it had been to take a leap with a small boulder in his arms. He realized the impact could easily cause him a head injury. He hit the water safely, though. He almost shivered at the thought of being alone in the ocean, out cold with no one around. He shook the thought from his head as the momentum from the fall slowed his plunge and the weight from the stone continued it. He let air out as he anticipated the feel of the ocean sand on his toes. Down and down he sank into the dark until the only light he could see was a faint glow of red. Hey guys, it's Oliver. Thanks so much for listening. Give me a like and subscribe if you want to hear more. Support this book and my continued writing through Patreon. I'll have regular episodes up until all chapters of this story are fully released. So stay tuned.